Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today we'll be folding an origami paper plane in Cinema 4D. This tutorial was brought to you by CG Shortcuts Pro Membership, where members get access to all of our premium training and tutorials, loads of time-saving assets, an online community, and direct help and support to learn Cinema 4D faster. Check it out at cgshortcuts.com forward slash membership or over on Patreon. Now let's get back to the tutorial. Big shout out to Manfred over at Video Effects, who was the inspiration for this tutorial with this very cool looping paper plane animation. I'll leave a link down below to where you can check out more of his work over on Instagram. But without further ado, let's hop into Cinema 4D and see if we can create something similar. We'll start by bringing in a plane, which we'll use as our piece of paper. And I want our paper to be 22 centimeters wide and 28 centimeters tall. But you can use pretty much any dimensions you want and this should still work fine. So let's zoom in here. And the next thing we wanna do is add a texture to this that shows us where we need to fold our paper. So let's open our material manager and double click in there to create a new material. Then inside that, we'll head over to the color channel and to our texture slot down here, I'll drag in my template image from off screen here, which I'll also make available to download below as well. And I'll apply that material to our paper. And we can now see that in the viewport, but the texture is a little bit blurry, but we can increase the resolution by grabbing the material again. And over in the viewport tab, we can change the texture preview size. So let's set this to 1024 by 1024. And now we can see those fold lines a bit easier. So let's get straight into it and start folding our paper. Let's make sure our plane is selected. Then we'll add a bend deformer and we'll hold shift when we click on that. So it's automatically applied to our plane as a child. And it should start affecting our plane straight away if we increase the bend strength. And it's definitely trying to bend it, but I think the orientation might be on the wrong axis. So let's undo that. And I want this to bend in this direction, which is along the X axis. So I'll switch to negative X and hit fit to parent. And now if we try to bend this again, it's now bending in the correct direction. But I don't want a big curly bend like this. I just want a nice sharp fold along each of these lines. So all we need to do is scale down the width of our bend on that same X axis. So let's bring that way down or just type in a very small number, like maybe 0.1 centimeters. So our bend deformer is basically now just a line running down the page like so. And if we try to bend this again, we get a nice sharp fold, which is exactly what we want. So let's undo that. And we'll get this first fold into place. And that might be easier to do over in the top view. And we'll need to put a bend deformer onto each one of these lines in the order specified on our template. So let's turn snapping on and we'll grab our first bend deformer and drag the center of that up here where it'll snap to the top middle of our page. And from that pivot point, we can switch to rotate mode and just line the angle up with our first fold line, like so. And it doesn't have to be super perfect, so I think about there should be fine. So let's put another bend on our second fold line as well. We'll hold control and duplicate a copy out on that angle as well. And for our third line, we'll need to move our bend over here. So I'll switch back to the move tool and holding control again, we'll drag out a copy and put the pivot point as close to that point as I can. So about there. And just rotate that to match the angle of fold line three. And now we need one final bend deformer and I'll just hold control and drag out a copy up here this time. Then to move this guy to the center of our paper, we'll just head over to the coordinates tab and zero out the position and rotation. And now our final bend deformer is going straight down the middle of the page. So we now have them all in place. Also, don't worry if your bend deformers don't go all the way across the paper. As long as you've got the right angle, the fold will still carry across the whole page. So that's all good. So let's switch back to the perspective view and we'll start animating our folds. So we'll start with the first bend here on frame zero over in the object tab. We'll set a keyframe at zero strength. Then we'll go forward to frame 12 and we need to bend this this way. But here we run into a little bit of an issue. We're getting these jagged edges because our plane probably doesn't have enough subdivisions. 
And if we hit N then B, we can see the lines. And indeed we do have a very low resolution plane here, but we can fix that super easily by grabbing that and just increasing the segments. And I'll just bring these up to 100 each to smooth that out. You could also try 200 to make it even smoother than that, or try to get your polys to be more square, which can also help. But I think in this case, 100 should be enough. Plus I'll probably add a subdivision surface later to smooth this out even more. So let's switch back to shaded mode by hitting N then A. And we do have some very small jagged edges on that fold, but like I said, adding a subdivision surface at the end should smooth that out. So let's carry on folding this. So on frame 12, let's fold this fully over onto itself, which is going to be 180 degrees. And set a keyframe, which gives us something like this. So that's our first fold done. So let's start our second fold on frame 12. So we'll grab our next bend deformer, set a keyframe at zero strength, then move ahead another 12 frames. And we need to bend this in the same direction, 180 degrees as well. But let's just switch back to wireframe mode again so we can check that there's no intersecting happening. And actually, because we're highly subdivided now, this is still a bit hard to see, but if we go up to display, we can switch the wireframe mode to isopalms instead, which will allow us to see those edges a bit more clearly. And I can now see that this fold is poking through the paper a bit over here. So let's back this up a tad to exactly 180 degrees, which is still poking through a tiny bit. So I think for this fold, we might need to go with 179 degrees instead. And you may or may not need to fiddle around with this depending on the angle of your folds. But I think in this case, 179 degrees should work. So let's keyframe that there. And we now have this animation. So fold one and fold two are done. So let's move on to bend number three. And we'll keyframe the strength at zero on frame 24. Then we'll take this ahead another 12 frames and see which way we need to fold this. And I think this time we don't wanna fold it this way because this is actually the wing. So we need to fold it back the other way. So that's going to be negative 90 degrees instead. And we'll keyframe that. So now we've got that folding in and the wing folding out. So with our fourth and final bend, I actually wanna animate this at the same time as the previous fold. So let's go back to where the wing starts to fold out on frame 24 and I'll keyframe the strength for fold four there at zero. Then when the previous fold ends at frame 36, I want the whole thing to fold this way to complete that side of our paper plane. So we'll set a keyframe here at 90 degrees. So our plane is now finally starting to take shape. So let's see what we've got so far. Nice. So all we need to do now is copy all of our folds across to the other side. So let's rewind this to unfold everything again. And we'll switch back to the top view so we can see this a bit easier. If I add a null object, which lands right in the center of our scene here, we can then grab all of our bend deformers and holding control, we can drag out some duplicates into our null, which are all in the exact same spot on the left side of our plane at first. But if we now grab our null, we can flip the bend deformers by heading over to the coordinates tab and inverting the X axis, which is this direction by setting this to negative one instead of one. And you can see those duplicates have now been flipped over to the other side. So now if we go back to our perspective view, we can grab all our duplicates and move them from the null into our plane hierarchy, which if we now hit play, gives us exactly what we want. Only we've got a slight issue here. So let's just rewind this so it's flat again and head back to the top view. The weird deformation we just saw is probably being caused by fold number four in the center here because our original fourth bend and the duplicate are in the exact same position as you can see. So all we need to do is grab our original fourth fold and move it this way ever so slightly. Then do the same for our duplicate fourth fold and move it out this way very slightly. So if we zoom in here, those two folds are now either side of our center line and not overlapping each other. So hopefully if we switch back to our perspective view and play this, we've now corrected that issue and have our completed plane folding animation. 
which is looking pretty cool. So all that remains is to smooth those edges out a bit more, which we can do by either going back to our plane and increasing these segments further, or we could add a subdivision surface, which if we hold Alt when we click, will automatically be applied to our plane, which now has a lot more subdivisions. And if we switch back to shaded mode, is looking much smoother as well. Or if you're using Redshift to render this out, you could just throw on a Redshift object tag and set the tessellation up to smooth things out at render time, which is probably the most efficient way of doing it. And you've got your completed folding animation. And if you wanted to maybe make your plane a bit more aerodynamic and angle the wings down a bit more, all you'd need to do is adjust your third bend deformers and just rotate those a bit more on this angle, like so. And maybe move that down by dragging the bend out this way to make your plane a bit more pointy. Then to copy this over, we'll just delete fold three from the other side and copy our new one to the null. Then in there, we'll reverse this back to one. So it flips that across again. And we can now slot that back into the hierarchy here. And as easy as that, we've now reshaped our paper plane. And because our paper is just a rectangle, we can also use our template image to paint a design onto our plane as well, because we know exactly where those folds are. So you could have some fun doing that as well. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. If you found this video useful, or if you have any questions, let us know down in the comments. Thanks for watching. If you learn anything from this tutorial, you're guaranteed to learn loads more with CG Shortcuts Pro Membership. Check it out over at cgshortcuts.com. In the meantime though, here's some more videos you might like.